next case is a nine year old girl she was diagnosed to have sinusinosis defect at, a, at the age of two years and the, uh, the usual management of sinusinosis defect is surgical closure but the parents were uh, not very keen on surgical management and they have been waiting uh, she is now well grown with a weight of 30 kg and uh, she has features of ASD with normal S1 wide split uh, S2 and a 3 by 6 ejection systolic murmur. Uh, her ECG is uh, uh, showing uh, RSR pattern in V1. And then this is, a, uh, this is her X-ray, uh, sorry, uh, trans, uh, transthoracic echo which is showing RAR, uh, right, uh, RARV dilatation and this is the uh, subsephoid view which is showing the sinus in of the ASD. These are the CT images which is showing the uh, PAPVC. The right upper pulmonary vein is dro uh, draining into the uh, uh, lower part of SPC close to the RA. This is another image which is showing uh, showing that there is a, a single upper uh, right upper pulmonary venous trunk which is very big and it is draining into the RSVC. There are no other accessory pulmonary veins draining above this level and uh, all other pulmonary veins are uh, draining into the LA. Get a right coronary artery catheter. Oh dear, oh dear. Shiva, my question to you is, yep. why is this patient's heart rate 153? Uh, he's, uh, he's just being intubated. Uh, it's uh, get the arterial pressure line open. Is it some atrial tachycardia? No, no she's uh, awake. No, no, she is. Uh, I mean, little bit of awakening. I can see oh. a clear P wave in the lead one. Can you put the okay. hemodynamic screen uh, uh, on the hemodynamic screen? Can you connect the radial artery pressure to the? We'll give now. Re the right atrial lead has got disconnected. Connect the... Okay. Whilst, whilst you're doing that, Shiva... You connect the radial artery line to one and I want one. That's all. Uh, yeah, Shiva, whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to ask Eric. He saw, briefly saw the CT pictures. Any comments? Get me the right coronary artery catheter. From what we've seen, R it looks very RCA oh, stent correction. What stent are you going to use, Shiva? Covered zephyr, 18 millimeter diameter, 59 millimeter long. Sorry, we missed that. Covered what? 18 millimeter covered zephyr. Zephyr. Okay. Zephyr. Yeah. I'll show you. Now, we actually, we are sort of beginning. Uh, so, I, uh, I, while while the technical team, can you show me the groin? I need only two pressure lines. One, this can you can use for the radial artery. Okay. So whilst you're doing that, how many accesses are you, are you going to have? Two. One, one right vein, one left vein. And you don't use the internal jugular or anything like that, no, do you? No, 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 no. And no arterial? No. The arterial is there. The arterial is just a, a cannula. For recording the pressures, uh, it's uh, it's going to be across the radial artery. Uda, is it radial artery? Yeah, radial artery. Oh, or will it be seen? This uh, aortic pressure will be seen on the big screen? Not so far. Okay, open this. I have I, I have my catheter in the pulmonary artery. Open the pulmonary artery pressure. Sister, sister, we want the aortic pressure also to come on that screen. So, use the second pressure. Uday, I want this pressure line. Anybody in the audience with experience of Zephyr stent? Mohammed, are we getting both pressures? In this sort of uh, sinus venosis or some other? Okay, open the other pressure line also, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is open now. I, no, I have opened it. It's of aorta. They are good. They are good and they retain no Where is this going? I okay. used both and uh, they were looking good. Muthu, you must have used them. Okay. Hold on. Now that is pulmonary artery and aorta. Show the hemodynamics big. Get ready the transepulsion of ASD. The advantage of Zephyr is there's no f zero force shortening. The currently available Zephyr XL stains can expand only up to 25. If you have a distance to cover more than 25, you cannot use the fire stains. 
So the double XL isn't come to market yet, but a covered XL stents goes to 25 and comes from uh, lengths from 29 to 79 lengths and no foreshortening. Okay. Yes. Thomas. Farin, come here. Control the wire. I want yeah, to enter into the question. superior. Control the wire here. Just a question over this tent uh, as well. This is a nine-year-old girl. Does it need to be overextended and or Show me uh, the redilated? And if so, to what extent can you overdilate a 40 millimeter stent? Okay, Shiva, you answer that question from it's Thomas. A, uh, we are we are going to be expanding it to 88 to 18 millimeter. If suppose that 18 millimeter or a 16 millimeter stent is now today if is closing the uh, uh, sinus venosus defect by the covered stent approximating like opposing against the caudal edge of the sinus venosus defect and it has closed the uh, sinus venosus defect there is no further need for any redilatation of that superior vena cava as a 16 to 18 millimeter SVC is good enough for the rest of the life of the patient. Even if she gets to 96 kilograms? I think so. I think so, so Shaq. It's not, a, I don't think there is any human being who needs more than 16 millimeter superior vena cava. The surgeons are putting in 20 millimeter front hand conduits. So 16 millimeter should be good enough and let us see. I'm actually targeting an 18 millimeter here. I want the okay. guide wire here. I want to put in the transeptal sheath. Transeptal sheath is ready, Farid? Transceptal sheet ready. So Eric, Shiva says 16 to 18. They don't go above that. We, we, well, I think the SVC range is anything from 14 you? to 28 millimeters Come in most Come here, humans. Please. Please. But whether you need that is another question. I don't think we know the answer other than the anecdote from a Fontan conduit of 20 being enough for a single ventricle patient. But in a biventricular patient, I don't know that a, for sure that a 16 millimeter SVC is good enough in all. So if, if um, this patient grows tall and big and wide, and presumably you're using this, oh, Shiva's using the stent to stop the SVC from growing, is that correct? It sounds like it. I presume you will be able to post dilate it. But then he doesn't want to do another procedure, so we'll just have to wait and see. Any other questions or comments? Anybody done sinus venosus defects yeah. by a catheter similar to what she was going to try and show? Matt? No hands. No one else is looking hey. A question for both Shiva and Eric, I think. We, we didn't spend a lot of time looking at the CT scan, and, and Eric and I would spend a lot of time before the procedures normally planning what we were going to do. Shall we below? There, there was a fairly juicy right upper pulmonary vein that drained in at the level of the pulmonary artery. So is that not at risk with a covered stent here? Okay, now uh, I want another right coronary artery catheter. I'm assuming, Shiva, you don't, uh, well, looking at that, are you going to be doing TOE as well or not? Uh, actually, we wanted to put in a TOE shack. There was some problem with uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the intensivist was not able to get the transesophageal probe inside and he was facing difficulty. So I told them, stop it. So I'm going to show, sister, come here. So I'm going to show, based on angiography, yeah, unobstructed right upper pulmonary venous drainage back inside. Uday, what was the problem when you tried to advance the uh, transesophageal probe? It was very tight. Okay, okay. okay. It, in spite so of let that me being just ask, uh, Shiva, you're, you're going to rely on angiograms. Yes. I'm just going to ask Sal here, who's, who does our TOEs, is that a reliable way of assessing? Well, in our lab, we use several different methods to assess, and, and TOE is, I think, you should say this better than me, but I think TOE is a very big part of what we do in our lab, so it makes me a little uncomfortable, but then that might be what other people are used to. So okay. you would say that Shiva's method of not using TOE, obviously in this case there is 
a problem, but uh, you wouldn't recommend avoiding using C TOEs. What I'm saying what? is if you've got a TOE and you can put it down, you absolutely should. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, uh, Sal, I wanted to show a TOE. The anesthetist faced the difficulty in advancing the uh, transesophageal echo probe in spite of that being a pediatric transesophageal probe. And so we decided not to go in. Okay, now come down. I little bit of space. I want, I'm going to go LAO, go uh, like the echo machine back. Just be there, just be there. When I tell you at the time. Okay, go to a little bit of RAO. In right anterior oblique, what I see is basically in, in AP projection, uh, uh, floor restore this and run it again. In AP projection, basically I try to come down below the region of SVC RA junction. Go to RAO 40. So I, I march down with my uh, transeptal sheath. I come below the level of SVC RA junction well into the fossa valis. And then in RAO projection, I see whether I am anterior to the spine so that means i am not very posterior and now go to lateral view in lateral view i shoot lateral view so are you are you aiming just for a normal transeptal septal puncture site or is there something different with this procedure that you no, try to normal, do normal normal transeptal puncture site table up table up and i'm assuming there's no pfo yeah, there was no BFO shack. <clears throat> Can you remove all those guide, uh, like get the, the electrical electrodes, the electrodes out? Get me one coronary guide wire, Surya. <clears throat> all the wires out. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Okay. Now, okay. I'm in the left atrium. Come to AP view. I want. Show the heart. Okay. Now I am advancing my transeptal sheath over the <clears throat> now it's okay I have got it out now let me check the position of my Okay, now we have got the sheath inside. Now I want to direct it towards the right upper pulmonary vein. Flush the catheter and put the guide wire. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you were going to use the other catheter that was in the pulmonary vein as your marker. I, I have seen it where it is, Shaq. I'm now going to <laughs> rotate my catheter. Can you hold the sheath firm? Can you hold it? I have rotated it clockwise. Now. Holding? Just continue to hold. Show of hands those who would 
uh, I know it's a bit late because she was done it already, but those who would do transeptal punctures nowadays without TOE guidance. One, two, three, four. Four, okay. Five. All right. I'm assuming the rest will put your hand up if the question was opposite rather than abstain. Yeah, okay. So ha having had difficulty with TOE, what would you have done? Uh, when, yeah, when the anesthetist can't pass it, assuming they've used uh, a scope and that's meant to be safe, I mean, sometimes Pick you it. can pass it yourself when they've failed. Standard but mostly we'd get an endoscopist involved. Because you know, this is a big child, we should be able to pass the TOE probe. Um, we uh, just get one of the GI people to have a look and see what the problem is and probably come back another day because we would view TOE as being an essential part of guidance for the procedure. But I'm not saying you can't do it angiographic or you couldn't do it with ice or anything like that, but it's just the way you were used to doing it and it would be unexpected. Yeah, or Kevin, some other imaging. Kevin, it is, uh, it is absolutely possible to put in the transesophageal echo probe. The problem was... In the time, short time of 30 minutes, 35 minutes, we were trying, to, we were not able to get it. That's all. Otherwise, on an elective day, oh. we would have got it very decently inside and we would have got beautiful pictures. Oh, now, right. Uh, to today, use yeah, satellite time, everything is there. No, that is the reason. Otherwise, I'm not advocating that every time we should be doing without transesophageal echocardiography. I hope so, I'm making it clear. Uh, this is, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is just, just the time being short. Uh, and if suppose if I... Uh, take about 15 minutes, for, uh, like pushing in the transesophageal echo probe. Would you enjoy watching that? Yeah, well, no. Yeah, so I know what you want. <laughs> Don't worry, Shaq, I'll make it safe. Uh, yeah, I, so uh, Asad suggested ice. Do you have that or is that too expensive? It is one, is it's very expensive. The child, I'm, I'm actually going in for small, small uh, vascular access right now. And if I need another eight French vascular access on the left side. I, I need oh. uh, now a marker pigtail. Too, too expensive. Thomas. How about a simple transthoracic echocardiography to guide? Come, you can, get scrapped. Uh, the fossa ovalis very well, in, especially in small children. Come. Does that sound too simple, Shiva? <laughs> what, what is that? Thomas suggested using transthoracic, uh, it's too late now, don't, don't do it now. Don't pull the catheter out and start again. But he was suggesting using transthoracic echo for guidance of transeptal puncture. I, I use fluoroscopic landmarks, Jack. I was actually mentioning that I, I come below the SVCRA junction, turn it around 45 degree, I mean, uh, at, at around four to five o'clock. And then uh, I'm, I'm actually planning to get it into the superior vena cava. Uh, Jack. Yeah. Uh, regarding the transeptal puncture without the uh, I have done at least 350 Can you get me the right corner without, without TE. I was taught by Chuck Mullins and James Locke, so I mixed their technique. You know, I think TE is necessary in the current era when we are doing paravalvular leaks, when we, uh, we are doing mitra clips. Uh, for uh, this uh, reason, I mean, it's not necessary. It's necessary when okay. you do this news. Right. So Next. let me stop you there. Of the people here, not the senior ones, the younger ones, how many do transeptal Left. punctures without TOE guidance, just on fluoroscopy like Shiva did just now? One, two, three, three four. Two. So that's, it's a generational thing, I think, isn't it? Just because we did it doesn't mean it's safe for the younger ones to do. <clears throat> and probably the ones that are do, doing it currently, there's probably a lot more rheumatics, yeah. Yeah, in rheumatic balloon mitral valvotomy and all in our country, uh, transesophageal echocardiogram is not done for septal punctures because these are, some, in some of the labs, they are done about five to six mitral valvotomies in a day. And uh, putting in transesophageal echocardiogram in each one of them is going to be extremely time consuming. So. Uh, there are uh, there are certain differences in which uh, uh, yeah, low okay. resource uh, environment will uh, so look at. A word about your technique. So you use the innominate vein as your 
landing, well, not landing, but so, uh, sort of anchoring and guidance purposes. Correct. Is that right? Correct. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you from now onwards the actual procedure starts. Uh, get the get this one. Uh, so what we are now going to do is we are going to make an injection of 15 ml at 15 rate on the marker pigtail. Get ready the 18 French sheath ready. Get ready the prepare the balloon uh, 18 into 6 zimet. Uh, so as he is injecting, ready? Okay. So now freeze this picture. So we have three centimeters, uh, two and a half centimeters above the uh, right upper pulmonary vein in the superior vena cava, roughly two, two to two and a half centimeter. And then this pulmonary vein is a large pulmonary vein. It is a very broad pulmonary vein. It almost measures around two centimeters. So two and a half on the top, two at the, at the next level. So that makes it four and a half centimeters. And then I'm planning a 57 millimeter. So what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to advance this guide wire. Sister, come here. Control okay, the wire. Whilst you're doing that, I'm going to ask Eric, landmarks there, size of the right upper pulmonary vein, its location, what are the considerations here? So I think one of the important things to make sure your stent sticks in the SVC, now it looks quite short between the top of the pulmonary vein coming in right, and the bottom of the nominate. So I think you're going to have to flare that stent into the nominate to make sure you've got stability. Right. Once right. you've done that, then as long as your stent is long enough, you'll cover the defect. And length? Um, again, you need to be, again, we use TE to decide how long the stent needs to be, but here you'd need to be a couple of centimeters below the lower edge of your pulmonary vein. I will, uh, after I advance this uh, guide wire, I will, uh, I will take this catheter, I will take that angiogram and I will discuss about the lens. Uh, so, length of the stent, Eric? Le From Show into me. the nominate to a couple Show of me. centimeters below the right pulmonary vein. Give a number. Show me the measurements. <laughs> I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll, I'll get you. Okay. Where are you now? In the, in the elbow. I'm going to park, the, park my Lunderquist wire in that position. What? Actually... That's to be secure. Yeah, to be secure. Instead of, are you going to get somebody to press on the arm as well? No, I don't move, Jack. It's a very heavy wire. It's a Lunderquist. Just keep watching. Now, uh, uh, like there are a lot of electrical cables there, but, but you can see that that is the wire. So now I'm taking out the catheter. Now show me that marker pigtail. Now run that marker pigtail. Run that marker pigtail engine and freeze it when the whole superior vena cava is filled. Uh, now a little bit more. Enough. Go back. Go back, 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 back. Okay, next. Okay, that's enough. Now, Shaq, let, uh, let, us, let us see this pigtail injection. Let us assume that the two innominate vein junction that is seen, make, make it big screen, yeah. The two innominate veins, the fusion point is the second marker. And then below the second marker, there is a, thir uh, there is a third and the fourth, which both of which are above the right upper pulmonary vein. Just above the fifth marker is the beginning of the right upper pulmonary vein. And then below the sixth marker is the end of the right upper pulmonary vein. Are we seeing those pictures clearly there? Absolutely, and I've counted as well. Yeah, so I'm from the innominate vein junction, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have around six, I will be, I'll be well below that right upper pulmonary vein. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to change my sheath in the groin into a 18 French. Show me the, sh <coughs> show the heart. So you said six. Does that give you an indication of the length of the stent? Yeah, the length of the stent has to be somewhere around six. So I'm targeting a six. Okay. So let, let now me see. The next follow-on question. Hold on, Shiva. Yep. This is very important. The next follow-on question is, you've got the six. Where Blade. is the Blade. margin of the ASD? that you want to overlap so that the stent is covering uh, or in contact with the septum? Uh, the, uh, the, we, the, that we will be knowing only when we advance the balloon 
and if if my balloon is going to be touching the uh, the superior edge of the uh, uh, this one if, if the superior edge of the sinus venosus defect i will get a complete occlusion and that will be the in fact this patient is not having a significant caudal ex, caudal extension so now i have got i'll show you now i'm going to i'm going to show now the next step is the balloon inflation you're holding the sheet hold on Ali. hello dr shiva anil here uh, Hi. any pre dilatation you have done or measuring the venous because 18 french you are taking in a small child oh for the for the groin vein is it yes yes uh, the groin vein was measuring around 6 to 7 millimeter in the ct uh, anil so uh, 18 french should be okay Six, six to seven millimeter groin vein in the CT, and that is without any uh, like, uh, uh, like the veins uh, little bit at least extend by one or two millimeters. You are ready with the balloon? So you have directly taken or predilated graded? Not predilated. Okay. Okay. Not okay. predilatation means what? You mean you meant balloon or what? No, no, no. I mean the, 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 the smaller, smaller dilators like twelve. Uh, no, okay. okay, what I used was a very uh, smooth uh, Cook's uh, uh, 18 French sheath. It went in. Uh, it went in rather smooth. Uh, uh, so now this is fully prepared. It's, it's got a long dilator anyway, so that dilates it for you. Yeah. So now, can you give me a three-way here? I'm just going to pick on uh, Abdul Wahab, which I'm still uh, trying to get this length choice of length of the stent sorted out what do you do you've heard what shiva said yes i agree that 60 millimeter length is uh, suitable for such large sinus venosus asd with dilate huge dilated right our pulmonary vein previously i used two cover stent overlapping two cover stent 45 Fantastic. 45 or 45 39 millimeter this is done before 10 years ago yes with TOE or without TOE? Uh, the first case is with TE, but uh, third and fourth and five cases uh, without TE, just angiographically. Yes. Okay. Right, Shiva. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm just preparing my balloon. So this is a 18 into six. Which balloon? It's a Z mid. Okay. Uh, I I don't use the sizing balloons at all. I use the regular uh, long cylindrical balloons. So. And uh, and you selected 18 based on the CT or? Based on the CT because the CT was showing the superior vena cava of around 14 millimeter and I'm going plus four. Okay. And any reason for going plus four as opposed to? Plus two or plus I, six? We have, this, is, this is what we have been doing. I, actually, whenever we go plus two, there was a lot of residual flow. Whenever we went plus six, there was a lot of pulmonary vein occlusion. Most of the patients worked well with plus four, but there will be some in which still you have to do a little, uh, you know, either uh, more or less. So right now what I do is, my, I am advancing my pigtail inside the pulmonary vein. Now put the pulmonary venous pressure bigger, uh, like a tens, uh, 20 scale, 20 scale, yeah. So let it keep running there. Uh, I am, okay, now you are holding it here. So why not make it 40 scale in case it rises above 20? Okay, let us see it, Shaq. Uh, okay, now. Okay, make it 40 because already the PV pressure without anything is uh, in the range of 13. Are we giving too much of fluids? Shiva. Uh, cut down the fluids, stop the fluids now. Yeah. Shiva, can you measure the left atrial pressure at the same time? Okay, I will give you. I have, I have two pressure lines. One is connected to the artery that is from the radial artery and one is connected to the pulmonary vein. I can disconnect and show you. I will do that, yeah. Eric. I will it's do that. I understand. I, 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 I will do that the moment I inflate. In and the I, absence of transesophageal echo, then you need as much information as you can, and okay. this would give you that. Okay. I'm just uh, I'm waiting for, once again, I'm, the, you, you can see that the left atrial pressure actually went out. I am I'm, I'm slightly pushing it a little bit more inside. Yeah, keep it there. So, sorry, is that the left atrial or pulmonary venous? Pulmon that's actually the 
the from the pigtail i'm recording from the pigtail the pigtail is okay okay now i will do one thing at this point i'm making one angiogram from the pigtail i'm giving the left atrial pressure now get the angiogram get some more contrast ma uh, some more saline <clears throat> Okay, aspirate. <clears throat> it's a, it's it's very slanting the the balloon. So I I don't know whether there is going to be a good occlusion. That is the left atrial pressure, Eric. Fifteen at fifteen. Yeah, but if you do both simultaneously, then will, it gives you I, a lot I, more. I I told about the difficulty because one is connected to the radial artery. I will do sir. Well, take it off. Okay, now see. I will show you what has happened. The sinus venosus defect has got closed, but now I have to ensure that the pulmonary veins are remaining open. So for that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get me a 16 into 4, uh, 16 into 6 uh, Z med also opened out. 16 into 6. I'll, I'll show you that angiogram now in a short. Just way. yeah, just keep replaying that angiogram. I'll, I'll, sort of comment. I'll, I'll, I will show that. Show me that previous angiogram. Shiva, your holes are into the LA and the right. pulmonary vein, so you can't tell anything from that angiogram. Correct. I was, uh, I was not able to, let me try to advance it a little bit deeper. It's a small child, uh, uh, or, or else another option is, can I have a six French guide catheter on this? Six French guide catheter. Or change to a five French uh, angiographic right Judkins or something? Uh, yeah, six French guide I'll take because the guide will give me a little better lumen. Matt? Okay, I don't want it to turn. Uh, okay, wait. Okay, be here. I, Shiva? Yes? Shiva is Matt. Are you sure that your pigtail was posterior to the sizing balloon then when it went up? I will you don't do usually that. see the pigtail move that much when you inflate the balloon. Uh, can you show the fluoro? I will show that mark now. I will, I'm, I'm just putting in. Yeah, catheter that will not contaminate with the... Uh, get me the guide, ca guide catheter. Do he boast? While I am advancing this catheter, slowly go to lateral view and show that our... Okay, we are holding the wire. Okay, go inside, uh, go to lateral, go to lateral, go to lateral, fully, yeah, it's posterior mark, you can see that, yeah, I'll show you CNE, okay, now come back to AB view, get ready the 16, prepare, 16 into 4, Advance the wire, sister. Leave the wire. Leave the wire. Leave the wire. Okay. Now, let this wire be inside. Okay. Now, get me a tuhi post here. Inflation. Okay. You can... So now I have, I'm connecting a two he post to the, I'm disconnecting the LA pressure. I'm connecting the uh, the right upper pulmonary vein to a six French guide catheter over a thermo wire and I am locking it with the guide wire so that the guide wire will prevent it from and I will move this sheet 
posteriorly. So, that is the right upper pulmonary vein. Right upper pulmonary vein pressure is a little on the higher side. It's 12 to 13. Now, this is fully prepared. And also, you can measure the LA pressure now simultaneously. Shack, I, told, I told that I have one pressure transducer already connected to the radial artery, which I cannot swap back. See, radial artery is going from the head end of the patient. Oh, you now, can't afford another one then. Uh, no, there, there are two transducers only. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay uh, from uh, Mohammed, uh, okay, temporarily cut off the radial artery. Uh, pressure is remaining very stable, 138 yeah, over 80. Don't, don't, don't cut it off, just no, disconnect. Close it. Close it there, the radial artery line, close it. Now get a, get a pressure from here, the second pressure line. Ah, clo uh, there radial artery line is closed. Perfect. Now get a, get a pressure line here on this. So this one, I am taking it out. So your next balloon is 16 by 4, is it? 16 by 6. Is it 16 by 6? Okay. Keep it, keep it straight and fix. Straight and fix. Straight and fix. Straight without any... Yeah. Oh. Shiva, I, I want to ask you something because I missed the reason why you are uh, using a smaller balloon. Okay. Show that the 18 balloon inflation. Six, the first one was by 6 to... 18, 18 balloon inflation, show me. 18 balloon inflation. You see now, when we are injecting in this particular balloon, I am getting exclusive filling of the left atrium. That means the sinus venosus defect is getting closed. There, uh, the, 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 at the time, the pigtail catheter was not too deep inside. So the pressure... The, the pulmonary venous pressure I was getting only 12 to 13, not very high. So there was a concern by Eric that I am possibly mixing up the left atrial pressure and the right upper pulmonary vein pressure. So now what we have done is we have got a end hole guide catheter that is lying in the uh, right upper pulmonary vein. You have got the second pressure line? The second pressure line, now we will connect it to left atrium. Shaq, you got what you wanted. Ask somebody yeah. to prepare the patient uh, there. Uh, can't, put can't the sheet. see it. Ah. Yeah, that's it. So simultaneous. Yeah. Now you show both. Yeah. There make, you go. Make it little bigger screen. Okay. So you, you are happy, Shaq, now. Yeah, very happy now, yes. Now inflate the balloon and show us what uh, happens no, to the pressure. I, I, I have to get the, the, uh, the balloon de aired One second. Who is preparing the next patient there on the other side? <laughs> okay. Don't Hold worry it. about the next patient. Let's do this no, one. No, no, Shaq, actually our transmission time is getting over. So, oh, right, okay. And, and also I have in another... 30 minutes, I have to go, I have to reach the airport. Yep. Oh, right. Tell them, tell them to hold your flight. Ah. <laughs> I am not, sir, Shakil Ahmed Qureshi. No, no, I, well, I'll ring Putin if you like, and then he'll get them to hold. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm going for this balloon. Sister, tell me the number. <clears throat> Okay. So no pressure change there. Okay. Now we are going for the injection here. So either it's very good or there's still a shunt. Uh, get me a contrast, concentrated contrast. <clears throat> Injector will be too bad to with an end hole catheter. What I need is just a, a 10 ml syringe with contrast. 10 ml syringe. I'll be able to push it better. 20 is too big. <clears throat> so this is an acid test, no, Shaq? Absolutely. Yeah. 
So and I would do it in this plane and lateral as well. I'm happy. Well, yeah, but show lateral as well. Uh, but but there is no flow shack. I'll show All you. Right. I'll show you, but lateral will not. Uh, see, the, there was no pressure difference, and there is uh, there is no flow. So what lateral will? I, I I'm happy, Shaq. All right. What additional if information? Have... If there is a residual flow, then I will look at it. But now there is no residual flow. So now okay. I'm going to I'm going to Eric. mount. Eric. Yeah, you carry on. I'm just going to ask Eric if he's happy. Because if two of you are happy, then I'm happy. That's nice, Shaq. Thanks for putting the other pressure on Siva. It's really helpful to know there's no gradient, particularly if you haven't got TE. We use the gradient, the TE, and the angio to decide whether there's any chance of obstructing the pulmonary vein. Eric, but we I, also Eric, I will tell you one thing. Actually, what was happening was we had a radial artery catheter which was connected to a head and separate monitor, which I cannot show you. I have got the hemodynamic monitor, which is shown to you. So. Uh, the radial artery monitor was running in the head end monitor, whereas the hemodynamic yeah. monitor is what you are seeing. So, unfortunately, Sh Sh uh, Shiva. There was, there was, it was not possible. Shiva, if, yeah. Shiva, stop. Shiva, stop talking. Yeah. Eric wanted to say something. Yeah. If I remember the right check, I've forgotten yeah. after all that. Let me understand. Sometimes the lateral shows that there actually is a kink and a little bulge from the balloon partially narrowing that you don't see in the AP. So you squash it in AP, you still see a good height, but when you look on the lateral, you can see some squashing. But I think, I believe with those pressures, you'll be fine. Sal says the TOE picture is also good. <laughs> TOE, right. yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, I, it's... Okay. Okay, Shiva, just to speed you up, now you're going to mount the stent or is it pre-mounted? Yeah, it's, no, 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 <laughs> it's a 59. I'm actually mounting on the same thing. I'm going to show you. Now, put the Zephyr crimper on table. I want, uh, I, I want this one, correct. Zephyr crimper on table, open it. And so you're going to mount it on 16? Yeah, this is... Uh, or 18? This is on a 16, on a 16. This is... Okay. Diluted contest. This is also diluted contest? Perfect. Open the Zephyr. Uh, just just to speed you up, you know, in interest of time, we're a little behind. Yeah, we, I am also far behind. Yeah. Get the, don't get worry, the, don't, get don't worry if you miss the flight. We'll see you another time. Yeah, yeah, true. Ready? This is the very Crippery interesting case. Shiva, can you put both pressures on the screen while you inflate the stent? Which pressure? Hyatic pressure. L LA and pulmonary vein. Ah, that I will show you. It is, uh, it's right now. I See, will, it's I not just me. <laughs> yeah, it's Evelina, the whole of Evelina. <laughs> okay, put it on bigger, little lower scales. Now, get me here. Uh, Matt, are you happy with Your both wife? pressures at the same time? Yeah, it's good to see them both at the same time. He's quite slow, isn't he? <laughs> That's Matt. Yeah. <clears throat> if I catch the flight, I will see you tomorrow, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a proper threat. Okay. Okay. Now this is the this is the covered Zephyr stent. Get me that 18 dilator. Okay, so don't drop that stent. Okay, now I want a, I want a, a load like this one, protective sleeve. The protective sleeve has to be something like 16, 18. Just, oh, yeah. So this is, uh, what length, 57 did you say? Or? Yeah, 59, right? 59. 59. Okay, I want the protective sleeve here. The crimper, bring it here. <coughs> Zephyr. Just in case there are people joining late, this is a Zephyr covered stent, um, which doesn't shorten apart from when it does. Uh, no, Shaq, actually, it shortens a little bit on the covered stent. 
it is not uh, uh, it, it is not uh, uh, it, it, the the bear stand does not shorten but the covered stand shortens very minimally it's not uh, not anywhere near the cp stands or the andro and all so this is the zephyr crimper the website quotes 5% for shortening and just look that up correct right. 4 to 5 percent for shortening for a zephyr who was that what, what's that uh, who was the who was the person who was telling 4 to 5 percent for shortening Mar it's martin he's a, martin's a world authority on zephyr stent shortening. yeah 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 i i agree with you martin By it's it's about google. five percent we we see about five percent for shortening shiva can i ask you something please yes. you know uh, other covered stent can use any other cover stand can use the B-graph, the self-inflating stands, for example? Yeah, but the B-graph's problem is uh, uh, you have to plan it very well because it is coming pre-mounted. If suppose if I do a yeah, prior balloon testing and then I have to use a yeah, different balloon. Here now I am doing the same balloon. Are you sure that we are doing the same 16 millimeter? Just recheck. Because we opened both 16 and 18, I want to sh make sure that it is 16, 16. Same balloon, right? No change. Right. Okay. Sh Shiva. Yep. Can you ask them to put the two pressures on the same range? Yeah. Put the pr two pressures on the same range. Thank you. Hold it here. Jack, can you ask um, Eric to comment about flaring into the anomaly vein and how he does that? Uh, okay. Yep, now, we'll come to that in a minute. Can you, let's or, just, no. let's can, just get uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is, uh, this is the important part. So now this is concentrated contrast. Okay. Okay, I'm almost at the upper end of this right upper pulmonary vein. So now I have four, four cells superiorly. So which means I am almost two centimeters above. So, so uh, just, Shiva, just tell us about the bottom end as well in terms of where, what your landmark is there, or the, is that not? The, the bottom end, the bottom end is going to be about two centimeters below the level of the right upper pulmonary vein. See, the right upper pulmonary vein occupies around 2 centimeters. We have 2 centimeters on the top and 2 centimeters on the bottom. Now, I am going to de-air this. Come here. Hold it. Now, when I tell you, you should be ready to inflate it. Now, Farin, when I tell you, not now. Okay. So, I'm going up a little bit, pushing the stent a little bit. Hold the two together, Farin. Hold the hold together. You are continuously on pressure. Be on pressure. It's too concentrated. Did you make a fresh dial? Okay. Now. Ah, 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 ah. Eight burst. Okay. So at this position, I stop here. I'm going to store this fluoro. Okay. So I'm filling exclusively the left atrium only. Okay, Shaq? Yep. And yeah. the pressures have not changed. Pressures did not change. I will flush the contrast out because I had some contrast. Not much of change. It's more or less touching each other. Now, at this point, 
the upper end is secure the lower end is little i'm not, i'm going to now deflate the I will now gently push my guide wire and allow the balloon to drift down. Now I have got the balloon to drift just, down. Uh, Shiva, just an important the, point. Yep. Yeah. I'm uh, pushing. If the, you look at the, if you look at the two pressures, they've both gone up. Yeah. No yeah. gradient, but they've gone up. Some amount of restriction, which is common. Yeah. So, at this point, again, I'm making one pulmonary vein injection because now contrast. <clears throat> yeah, there is not much of difference between the left atrial pressure and the right upper pulmonary vein pressure. I'm making a contrast angiogram. Okay, there is some amount of residual. I'll, I'll now flare out the lower end. Because when I had the balloon fully inflated, I was occluding it. So, I, okay, at so, this part, now I have only three centimeter, three, three struts. First, three, as I am inflating now, you have to keep a forward push. Now, just give a gentle forward push. Okay, now tell me if I am going to eight atmospheres. Is the eight the burst pressure? Nine, right? Yeah, some recoil is there. But let me see now again one angiogram. We have that 18 balloon still there, no? Uh, Ashok, get ready. The lower end, whether there is some small amount of flow. I will now go for the 18 on the lower part <clears throat> i am now deflating this so so the difficulty without toe is this isn't it eric you are yes, not uh, you are not seeing whether it is lack of opposition correct Shak, the it was show you whether the leak is coming through an endo leak or through around the stent. How commonly have you seen endo leak, uh, 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 Eric? We've definitely seen... Meaning fabric leak, fa frank yeah. fabric leak. We, we've seen one fabric leak uh, when we re-stented a patient and definitely with a balloon inflated, there was no leak. As soon as you let the balloon down, you could see yeah. contrast going into the stent. Yeah, yeah. The, we, the we, have just, uh, we have just got our manuscript accepted. It was a fabric leak in two patients with covered CP stent, where in both the patients we had to do, uh, can you hold here? In, in both the patients we had to use one extra long CP stent in order to get it uh, fully, uh, you know, sorted out. I, I thought the paper was still under review, Shiva. Uh, I... I don't remember, <laughs> Eric. Maybe you are <laughs> reviewing because I, 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 in the, I, I, I remember writing some uh, replies, but I don't. Uh, just a second, I'm sorting out the de-airing. Uh, he's denying it. <laughs> he's not. Uh, he's not reviewing the paper. He's denying reviewing anything. I know Puzzle. that either either it is Shakil Kireshi or Eric Rosenthal who have to review a paper on sinus venosus defect. <laughs> it, it's, it's neither of us. Basil, go on. Yes. Uh, I wonder if uh, Siva had used a, so, a little bit shorter stand. He, he will not have such an amount of metal in the right atrium. Yeah, but then it will be too yeah, short. I think it's too, too, too. Then it will be too short covering yeah, the defect. A little bit shorter. No. Shiva, are you worried about the elevation of both LA and pulmonary venous pressures to the tune of nearly 20-25? It happens, uh, Shaq, uh, it happens, Bharat, quite often. And we right. give diuresis. Now you see that there is a, 
there is uh, actually there is an increasing residual flow. Now, Uday, I need the transesophagia. Now, okay, uh, we'll, we'll get it inside. Get the probe. Now, if the patient is quiet. Uh, Shiva, why, don't you, why don't you do a, a lateral angio? Perhaps okay, lateral picture. Minus 90, minus Lateral, lateral picture once. Uh, Uday, once again. I'll give a lateral and then. Minus 110 or something, because you may then see whether the shunt is round the stent or yeah. through the stent yeah. fabric. I'll do that. Radwa. Uh, Shiva, it's Radwa. I'm just wondering about the, the top end. Are you happy with the length that you have at, to at the top? Uh, the length was 59. Uh, I, so I, how much I, above the, the pulmonary vein? How that much? Is, uh, above the pulmonary vein, it was originally I put it 4, but now I think it, it, there is something like 3 there. Okay. Now, uh, so, Shiva, this is n interesting, isn't it, Eric? See, this is I mean, not a fabric endoleak. No, no, no. It looks like it's going anteriorly, so you need to flare it even more. Yeah. yeah. So I will do one thing. I will, this time I will flare it using my balloon, using my indeflator. Last time I used just the hand. But maybe also, uh, following on from Radwa's point, you need to flare the top into the nominate some more, or are you happy with the stability there? Uh, come to AP view again. Do you think you need to flare the top end as well? Uh, top end? Uh, Into the nominate some more. Uh, let me see. Uh, top end, uh, show me the AP view now. Okay. Top end, there are about three cells there. I think... Uh, I think that is fair enough. Now I'm I'm just going for the bottom end. Keep it pushed, uh, Farin. System. What is the burst pressure of this balloon? Seven. And this is 18 millimeter, is it? This is low. Yeah, lower one is 18. Seven. Seven. Around eight. Around eight will be the burst, I think. Yeah. Now I'm going for. With the full balloon, I'm seeing whether there is any leak. I think they're probably... Well, with the balloon full, it doesn't help. Correct. Yeah. So, no, uh, I'm just finding out whether the approximation is there. Now I am deflating it yeah. with... Uh, I am, I'm going to deflate it on... There's quite a lot of movement. Yeah. Quite, and, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of uh, movement, and I have only around two, two struts remaining. And, uh, and interestingly, Shiva, when you are inflating the balloon, the pressures are going down. Ah. And when you deflate it, they go up. Okay. I mean, I would have expected the other way around. Yeah. I didn't watch the pressure, Bharat, because I Oh, was, it, uh, it comes down to nearly 10, 11. There is a lot of flow. Okay. Shiva, I think next thing you ought to think about is the innominate vein in relation to that top end of the stent. Innominate so vein? Well, how far your top end of the stent is from the innominate vein. It probably has, has come down quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I probably have got only about uh, uh, a little more than 10 millimeter anchor right now. Because yeah. you see, there are only two cells. Each cell is 5 millimeter in a zephyr. So now, uh, Dr. Uday and uh, Srija are getting the probe inserted. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this balloon out. Uh, so, so whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to ask Eric, would you, what would be the f next thing to do in stages? Put another anchoring stent at the top and then flare, or what? So, I mean, the limited catheters, because it would be nice to do a uh, nominate vein angio at some point to an SVC angio, but the other thing is using another a, guide catheter, a flaring another. balloon at the bottom. But I think you need TE to see that your stent isn't too short at yeah. the bottom. Yeah, show the show the echo now, big so. echo, big. Okay, go to zero degree, Srija. Uh, sorry, sorry, ninety degree, ninety degree. Yeah, and now uh, right toward rotate slowly. Okay, now get the get, that is the right upper pulmonary. Get the color in the right upper, fully right upper. Yeah, make the color sector a little narrow. Thomas, little narrow. 
little narrow. Okay, right upper is okay. Now come so to slowly towards the left. Every further inflation of the no, no, bottom no. Give, end. Give the, the color narrow. Give the color narrow. It will lose stability at the top end. So I okay. would probably put a bare stand. Ah, now keep, uh, keep coming left to get more stability and to allow uh, enormous vein flow further. Or keep coming left to And then dilate with whatever coda or something in the bottom end. Further left. See, Shaq, this is the place where there is a residual flow. This is now yeah. close to the retroaortic margin. Okay, it's uh, it's very close to the retroaortic region, and keep okay, okay. Now let me. Come I'm just going to gonna ask uh, Sal uh, for her comments on the pictures now. To you. So, can you just roll back from the pulmonary veins um, forward towards the aorta? That's quite a large leak. Um, and I can't see in the margins of your stent. Have you ridden up a bit short? Okay. Yeah, so Let roll me. backwards. I can't see the bottom end, the caudal end of your stent. I, I feel like it might have ridden short. Okay. Now, Sal, I'm, I'm now showing the long oh, axis of the... Quite long. So your, your, sh your shunt, therefore, is mid-level, isn't it? it see, now, a... see, now I am, I am in the long axis of the stent. I'll make yeah, it a see. little shorter. So now I'm mov now moving towards the rightward corner. I will take away this color compare. I'm moving towards the rightward corner where the pulmonary veins are draining. I'll reduce the color gains a little bit so that unnecessary noise is so not there. So, so, so from that you can see your shunt is not posterior. It's not near the pulmonary veins. Yes, it so is not. It is not rightward. Now no. I am coming. I am coming slowly here. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's at the crest of the septum. Yeah. Now, now you see that the crest of the septum. It's, it's, right. it's near the crest of the septum. But it's very. It's a very odd. I wouldn't. I, I don't know. Not, I, not at that point, Sal. Not at that point. I'll tell you why. There is no flow convergence on my left atrium in that area. See that? See that? There is a blue color, which I would say probably is even the SVC flow can be there, because I, you see I, that. There is not a proximal flow convergence at that point. You see that? The, the, the shunt you, is at 9 o'clock. No, I, I'm telling you. This is the place which you are calling as the shunt, right? Yeah. I am telling I, that that may be sometimes the SVC flow. Now, uh, because, no. because I am not finding a proximal flow convergence at this point. I will t I'll show you where the flow convergence is. Now I am coming left toward. Yeah. I am com I'm driving it towards the aorta. But Shiva, I think I agree with Sal on this. You don't see the stent when you see that flow. There it see, is. See, yeah. now, this is the flow, Sal. This is the place where the flow is there. This is yeah, the right toward. This is the right. They, more, this is the left toward edge, more close to the aorta. Though. You see that this is this is the place where it is closer to the aorta. You see, yeah, this that, is, that will be around the crest of the septum. Now, what is that? I will show it on a short axis now. So this is the short axis. Now, Sorry. you see that it is on the rightward edge of the sinus venosus defect. Yes. Yeah, so that's at zero degrees, and so that blue shunt is going to be around the crest of the septum. Crest of the septum. Yes. Yeah. So it's so, nothing. It's not near the pulmonary veins. It's at the level of the pulmonary veins, but on the other side. Yep. Yeah. It is. It is looking. The the. This is the pulmonary artery. I'm going in. This is the pulmonary vein. It is not on the side of the pulmonary vein, but it is on the on the leftward side, more closer to the, towards the aortic root. Yeah. At the crest of the septum. At the crest of the septum. At the crest of the septum. And uh, and now let me let me also tell you. The, the reason why I, I told that the, the flow that you are seeing within the superior vena cava was uh, the, the stent was actually not because you see this this is the color this is the color between the left atrium to the right atrium and so I am telling that this particular color is is not the just the natural SVC flow because this is this is much uh, different in its velocity here is the residual flow. Now, if suppose if I have to enlarge this, we, uh, actually if I if I put in an additional, because I cannot enlarge further, uh, the stent is keeping on migrating down. So I probably will look at additional one more stent. Uh, I will I will now make it zero degree. Okay. Shiva. Another another option is shack. See yeah. this the, the, this this shunt is not looking very bad. What do you say, Sal? I think Sal, you can. I, She's I, gone. Oh, Sal, come back. Yeah. 
<laughs> She's gone. So uh, I think in practical terms, I, I would do the innominate vein check. I will and, do that. Uh, uh, see whether you need to anchor before you start flaring and putting anything else in. Yeah. The, 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 you the, agree, quantum, the quantum of the shunt yeah, seems I, to be smaller I in this area. I think the shunt is quite small and your left atrial and pulmonary vein pressures are high, indicating there's no significant left to right shunt. So you could stop at that point at the bottom, but I think you have to be sure you're secure at the top. I will, I will, do, one, I will do one picture uh, right now from the, uh, from the uh, innominate vein. Get me another guide catheter. Shiva. Yep. Shiba, we've got another session starting here now. We're overlapping a little bit. So yep. uh, we're going to have to leave you. Yep. And then good luck with the flight. But yep. thank you very much for a really interesting case. Well done to the team. Thank you. Watch stage that's there.